Hello, today we are extracting from Mojave rattlesnakes, Crotalus scutulatus scutulatus. These first couple animals that you see are from Arizona, and then the next video clip will be animals from Texas. And because we know there's a lot of variation in this venom, uh, which I'll talk about uh, during the next clip, we do keep the locales separate just to make it a little bit easier if a researcher is potentially interested in looking at that. Uh, Mojave rattlesnakes get their scientific name from the scales on the top of their head. Mojaves have several large scutes or scales on the top of their head instead of having many small scales like most rattlesnakes do. Uh, this next one has a little bit of an interesting pattern. Uh, it's a little bit darker than they usually are. We think it's actually quite a pretty snake. He's clearly trying to run away very hard right now, but he does come out here in just a second. Here we go. <laughs> and you can see, we just think he's, he's really pretty and nice looking. This species of snake is one of the four that's used to make uh, crofab antivenom here in the U.S. The other three are eastern and western diamondbacks, and also uh, cottonmouth venom is used. So bites from Mojave rattlesnakes can actually take two forms because different populations have different sorts of venom. So some of them have a high neurotoxin, they're generally called type A venom, uh, and that's the ones that we have. Um, and we do know that ours are the neurotoxic ones because A, they were collected from the correct areas for that venom, but also they've been tested, so we know that that's what we have. And uh, there are some that have a type B venom that is more like your traditional rattlesnake hemorrhagic uh, cytotoxic venom. And these guys, uh, but especially the neurotoxic variety, can really cause a significant uh, bite. And Jim has actually been bitten by these and did have neurotoxic effects. So in one bite, he actually had uh, ptosis, which is the inability to open your eyes. Uh, that's a, caused by descending paralysis. Uh, within about, I don't know, 20 minutes of the bite? Does that seem right, Jim? And, uh, and then he also, in the car, was basically gasping for breath. So he was actually pushing on his abdomen himself to try to keep himself breathing. And that was occurring right as we were arriving to the hospital. And luckily, we have a very good relationship with the physicians in our area at the local emergency department. So they kind of know that if we show up and say we have a particular bite that we know what we're talking about, luckily. <laughs> and uh, he was appropriately treated with antivenom. Um, and then several years later, he actually had a second bite from these guys. Um, and in that bite, he did not have the descending paralysis, but he did have some really horrible uh, vomiting and muscle tremors, uh, again, also caused by the neurotoxin. Sometimes people will say that if a snake is neurotoxic, that that means you will not have tissue damage from it, but that's not really true. Uh, there's never any guarantee that you won't get tissue damage. You might not be as likely or as much as a snake that is predominantly uh, hemorrhagic, but it certainly still can happen. Now, the other thing I have to feel like I have to point out with these snakes, just because it annoys me personally, is sometimes these are called Mojave greens. And I have to say that annoys me because they're not green. Green mambas are green. Green tree pythons are green. It is, I guess, you can see a little bit of a greenish tinge in some individuals of these snakes, but I don't understand why some people think it's enough to actually call them that. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, prairie rattlesnakes can be pretty green, uh, Curlus viridis, but I just don't see it in the Mojaves. And we've had over the years, lots of Mojaves here. I just don't see it. 
Now, if you're interested in Mojaves, we also uh, do have another video about them uh, where we compare and contrast Mojaves and Western Diamondbacks. Thanks for watching, everyone. Here's what the venom looked like. You can see we got more from the Texas animals than the Arizona ones. We've got more of those. And remember to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you like. Have a great day.